Whatever you need, and he promises in Philippians 4.19 that he shall supply all of our needs according to whose riches? His riches in Christ Jesus. That's what he promises unto us. All right? So back to you. Praise the Lord. All right? Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Goes into the next piece over here, and the chair thinks it's a great point. All right? Next point over here. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. Now, again, the English language in and of itself is extremely limited. The word blessed over there, all right, I heard a preacher say that uh, it's a pity that sometimes the only hear people hear about blessing and so forth is when someone sneezes. <laughs> Right, God bless the queen. God, you know, <laughs> that's the only time people talk about blessing sometimes, which is a pity because God actually wants to lavish his blessing upon us. How do I know this? Because according to Galatians chapter 3, all right, because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross, every blessing, my friend, that was given unto Abraham has come upon us as Gentiles through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, which means what you have, you are the true heir of the blessing of the Lord, it's you. Do you realize how big that is? And the word blessed over here, it basically means, and I'm paraphrasing, blessed means to be endued again, endued with power for success, prosperity, longevity, fruitfulness, happiness. I think I missed one. No, it's all of them. Success, prosperity, longevity, fruitfulness, and happiness. That's what the word blessed over there is. Amen. I thought you guys would at least clap or like smile or, or something. That's some good news. So he says, blessed are those who fear the Lord. Meaning that you have, a, not, not that you're scared of God, that he's going to hit you over there with a baseball bat. No. But the word fear there means that you have a reverence, meaning you have a respect for God. Right? Because you know he's your father. But there's still a respect, there's an honor there at the end of the day. And according to Jesus, he took upon all our curses so we as individuals might be blessed. Meaning you have been endued, endued now with power for success, prosperity, longevity, longevity, fruitfulness, and happiness. Okay, that gets me pumped up. Okay, let's, look, let's listen to the next verse over here. Now, all the parents need to listen up to this one. All right, all future parents. It says this, verse 2. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Amen. My friend, I want to encourage you today. Do not settle for anything less than that which God has promised. Yeah. I'm going to try that one again. Do not settle for anything less than what God has promised untowards us. Because look what he promises over here. He promises that when you are with him, your children and our children will be blessed, will be mighty in this land. So if you're not currently physically seeing that, you continue to hold on to this promise until, until this comes to pass. And you take this word and you make a declaration of this over your children, either on a daily or whenever you feel led to do so. But this is the reality for your family. So anything other than this is the enemy busy stealing, killing and destroying your family. Because this is what was promised. So if you're not physically seeing it right now, physically like this, you then take this word and you grab a hold of it because it's not some motivational quote. This is the truth of the word of the living God. According to God, when you're with him, your children will be mighty in the land. That's what the word says. And what's so powerful, one of my favorite verses, I was so blessed last week. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is John 10, 10. And it says these words, that the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus came to give us life and a life of abundance. Now the message, if you want to be really, if you really want to enjoy that verse, go read it in the message translation. Oh, Jesus. It says some good stuff. It says these words, and I'm just paraphrasing again. It says that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus came to give us life, and uh, life eternal, and then more, and a better life than you ever dreamed of. Hmm? How amazing is that? And must say, I just want to give honor where honor is due. My lovely wife, her success rate in advising which movies we should watch is incredible. And I'll be honest, usually when she tells me we should watch this movie, I'm like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Because I mean, like when you're watching a movie, you're giving away part of your life, right? Because <laughs> it's time. It's like it's, you're giving away an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours. So that's, that's, that's valuable, valuable stuff, right? So she's like, no. And then I completely forgot that she told me about this one particular movie. And then we were at Danelle and there maybe two weeks back. And then Danelle's like, oh, there's this movie called uh, The Greatest Showman. And she's explaining how this whole movie goes. Bum, 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 bum. 
And then I'm like, what? I want to really watch that movie. And then wife is like, but I told you about that movie before. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, cool. Flip. So then I think it was the, the following night, wife and I, they get Greatest Showman. Now, I don't know if you've ever watched Greatest Showman. It is, for me personally at least, a top, top, top movie. All right? It's like a little musical thing going on and it's really, really cool. It's like high school musical on steroids. Like it's just really nice. Right. But anyway, so in this movie, basically, this I'm going to quick, quick run through. This boy is an orphan. He's got this dream of uh, being a showman. All right. And then he gets married to like his uh, baby sweetheart and whatnot. But she comes from a really rich family. He comes from a really poor family. I mean, you know, he's, he ended up being an orphan, but they get married. She loves him even, even though, you know, she loves him for who he is. But then eventually, you know, things aren't going well financially. And he looks at her and he says these words to her. He says to her, these, this, this, my love, or whatever you call the, this, my love, is not the life that I promised you. Oh, Lord, I start, Holy Spirit starts helping me with this thing. I'm thinking, okay, Jesus says he's come to give us a life better than what we ever dreamed of. That is his promise to us. So if we're not physically seeing that right now, all right. We need to continue to hold on to that promise and continue to walk with him because, Lord, this is the life that you promised, a life better than what I ever dreamed of. Now, please, I think every married person inside this room can tell you this or anyone who's been in a relationship before, like relationships come with conflict, right? There are challenges and so forth. But these words came out of my wife's mouth a couple of uh, days ago. She, she again shared with a friend that when we have like little, you know, challenges myself and her, little riffs here and there, which doesn't really happen often and I'm not trying to like it's not that often right but when they do happen because it's part of the game when they do happen um, it actually those challenges after we come through it it actually brings us closer together mm. right because you feel more of an acceptance you feel more of a belonging in the family you know that kind of stuff so like the same principles apply with regards to our relationship and walk with God he says if you share with him in his suffering you too shall share with him in his glory mm. So if you're going to get persecuted here and there, go through some challenges here and there, my friend, listen, don't throw in the towel. Don't use your weakness as an excuse to quit. Allow God to strengthen you through the challenge because once you come through on the other side, you're about to hit those blooming diamonds on the screen. Okay? Because you are going to make it through on the other side. Why? Because our king has promised to give us a life better than what we ever dreamed of. So the enemy tries to steal and kill and destroy and to cause us to settle for something less than God has for us. And us as individuals, I mean, we are, we are so, what's the right words to use, Lord? We are so used to survival mode within our lives, which is basically what happened after Adam ate the fruit. Look at it. After Adam ate the fruit, mankind went into survival mode put the fig leaves together. And they, they stepped out of abundance. They stepped out of overflow and went into survival mode. And then God told them, but now you're going to be, you know, when you work, it's going to be by the sweat of your brow and so forth. But when Jesus was on the cross, his blood had hit the earth and so forth to remove the curse so we can enter into a place of blessing again and enter into this covenant. And by the way, side note, God's blessing and God's favor, they work hand in hand. Mm 